we're going to uh, uh, work on taking a bearing off a shaft here. Now this happens to be on a crankshaft, but the technique we're going to use could be on anything. It could be on axle or anything else. And we're going to go ahead, and I want you guys, I want to encourage you to think about something. The order we do things sometimes just makes life a lot easier. You can see the wooden boxes we like to use for uh, supporting these cases so that we're not dealing with the bench. So here's an example of a bearing that needs pulled off. And on this, would you agree that it, it'd be harder to support this crankshaft and then work with it? So the time to take this bearing would realistically be better if it's supported. Now what I would do then is I would probably just take some soft aluminum jaws, clamp this in a vise, and I'd really just get this piston off here so that I'm not having to worry about it. Make mm -hmm. sense? So I'm just going to set this out of the way for right now. And we're going to look at some tools that we have available. Here's an old uh, bearing press here, and this is the guy I think we're going to use. And what we do is we go around the bearing. All right. What do we need to do here? Grease it up. No matter what, we always put some grease on here. Now, in this one, it's just splined, so we don't have something to thread on there, so we don't have to worry about it too much, right? Right. So we're going to just really get set up on our taper here figure out how we can uh, get this on then what we do is we lock these down and what this does is allow stuff to get really firm and not move around on us we got some damaged threads on this so it does take a little uh, little effort here a little bit of setup here Then uh, we can stabilize these as well. So we've got multiple places where we can tighten down here to basically get this to uh, pull off. Now, you guys saw that this ended up being uh, really easy here, but we'll take it, support it here, and then just pull the bearing right on up and off the shaft. Okay, take it like that, and uh, life is good. So I think what we'll do is we'll, maybe we'll make a video on uh, on Sean's that is obviously going to be a lot more difficult to do. I want to show you, so the, we said the reason we couldn't use these was the fact that there's no room to get this big jaw underneath this bearing. Okay, so when this bearing is all the way down here, we don't, we don't have room to get under it. This is just way too thick. And that's why we need the, the cradle there. Here's a, an ideal set. If you're going to turn wrenches all day long, here's a set we got from Mac. Um, that's a universal kit here, and these are sized more commonly to the type of uh, sizes of bearings that we're using. I overheard you guys grab this earlier. Did somebody describe this edge as being pretty sharp? Yes. It is pretty sharp. So you can see here, it's super flexible, super adjustable. This is a really nice kit here, a bunch of different adapters and spacers for different length shafts. Really like this guy. Just because we do this a lot, I wanted to make a point that Harbor Freight sells theirs, uh, pretty inexpensive, but this is, if you're working on customer bike and working all day long, I'd probably recommend that you get a brand name Mac or Snap-on tool set. But uh, the Harbor Freight here, if you're looking for something, and if you're okay with it only lasting a few times, um, and what the problem is, you can look at these sets look almost identical, is the quality of this metal and the heat treating process of it isn't anything compared to the, the brand name US made tools. Would you guys agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And so when you're trying to press a bearing off and you're trying to scoop this thing up and this metal's not very soft, it's just gonna wear out really fast. And here's what you need to know. Of this entire tool, this doesn't break. This doesn't wear out, this doesn't stretch. Where the problem is, is literally just this paper thin part right there. Basically where we scoop up. So that's not much real estate of the whole function of the tool. That's what your best friend is. And when that gets thinner, when that breaks off, it actually gets thicker. Because look what it moves into. It starts to move into the, the body of the tool. And it, when this gets thicker, you're not able to get underneath the bearing. And then it just becomes junk. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Well, we, uh, we'll take a look here on what bearings we need to pull off, but that is how you would set the tool up and how you would remove that bearing.